Does the iPhone 15 Pro Max have overheating issues that are big enough that you should actually be worried or consider not upgrading just for that reason alone? Well, for the last couple of hours, I've been running a series of benchmarks and real world tests trying to prove to you guys that this is the perfect solution to stop overheating. This is the Razer phone cooler and what I found completely blew my mind. It turns out that even though this uses a Peltier cooling system that gets as low as three degrees Celsius, you might not actually need this at all. Let me explain in just a minute, but first what I want to do is break up my results into three different sections talking about overheating with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, of course, just this morning, Apple released an update to solve the overheating issues, but that's actually for kind of part one of those issues. Basically, when you get a new iPhone and you start installing everything, with all the indexing and installing that goes on, it does heat up more than usual. Now, the other fact is that we did have some issues with apps like Instagram, where it would just basically overheat the iPhone. Some people even experienced charging issues, just having their phone on. And some people found that if you simply turn off background app refresh, all of the heating issues went away. So that basically means that something with the software optimization, when it refreshed in the background, it would spike the CPU. And of course, we know that the new A17 Pro chip can use a ton of power, up to 14 watts for the CPU alone, in some tests 40% more than the A16. So when that spikes, it does overheat but Apple said they're working with Instagram and other third-party apps to get this solved. And so far, with the new update, this phone feels pretty cool. I'm not getting any overheating issues with regular use. But now let's get into the extreme benchmarks part where I did notice some thermal throttling that was actually fixed by this Razer phone cooler. What I did was I turned on the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, which is 20 minutes long, but I did two runs of them back to back, so 40 minutes of stress testing and check out my results. With the first one, the very first score was 4,255, which is very, very strong. And by the end of the 20 minutes, you can see that it went down to 2,752. And you can actually see this chart right here kind of sloping down the scores with a lot of this thermal throttling. And as soon as that first test was done, I started the second one, and here are the results for this one. The best score was 2777, and it went down to a low of 2584, but that actually wasn't the last score because the very last run was 2621, which means that the chassis heat soaked and it started kind of balancing out and the scores started recovering. But still, that's a huge 62% drop in scores from the peak of 4200 down to the final score. And then I turned on this Razer phone cooler and did it again. Here are the scores right here. Look at the difference. We dropped from 4,200 down to 2,900. So we didn't go as low as the other one, 2,700. And you can actually see this chart right here, flatline. That means it was able to stop the heat soaking of the chassis. And the last score, run 20, was actually higher than the lowest, 2912. And then I ran back to back a second test and check this out. Almost a perfectly flat score. 2941 was the best and the last was 2931, just 10 points drop. So we successfully stopped overheating and throttling, keeping the chassis cool enough to run at sustained performance, which is exactly what you want with something like this, because if you're playing games or other things like that where the chassis starts getting heat soaked, the FPS drops, then you have your battery dealing with the heat and everything dealing with that heat, it could potentially impact the longevity of the device, so this is great for that. And comparing the final results, basically the final scores, we ended up with 12% higher performance 
with the Razer phone cooler, which honestly isn't even that much. Now, of course, benchmarks don't really mean much because they're benchmarks meant to push the phone to its absolute limit. So we gotta test something that's more realistic. And the one thing where you're really gonna suffer from, let's say display dimming, overheating with performance drops is mainly gaming. Now, yes, Apple did announce some new AAA games like Death Stranding, Assassin's Creed, Resident Evil Village, and those will be much more tough on the iPhone. But for now, we do have some games that I just tested that will push it to the limits and previously experienced a ton of overheating and display dimming, especially when I tested it with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So getting into part number three with the gaming results, I basically set a timer for 30 minutes playing Genshin Impact at full maxed out brightness, expecting to see a bunch of display dimming like I did before, getting ready to use the phone cooler to show off a nice difference where you don't have any display dimming, you have better FPS, but no. To my surprise, after 30 minutes, I had zero display dimming. The back didn't feel very hot at all, and yes, Metal FX was off. I was completely shocked, and my mind was blown that there was no dimming at all. So then, I turned on Pascal's Wager, which supports very high graphics at 120 FPS, and in the past, I had extreme dimming, and guess what? No dimming whatsoever. Nothing. Nada. Then I played COD Mobile, 100% maxed out brightness, 120 FPS, no dimming at all. This is blowing my mind because I thought there's gonna be a lot of overheating issues due to the very hot A17 Pro chip, but no, no display dimming. This just doesn't make sense at all. I didn't even test this out because I didn't need it. Now, here are a couple of reasons why I think this might be happening with the new 15 Pro Max. Number one, well, we are in an AC conditioned room where everything's nice and cool, I'm not outside. I'm sure if I was outside in the sun, then we'd probably get display dimming for sure. And then in that case, the phone cooler would really help. But how many people play games outside? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Well, the second reason I think this might be happening is because Apple did add an extra GPU core, which has 20% higher GPU performance. So what if it's enough performance to where the GPU doesn't have to fully max out and hit that crazy high wattage, it can tone it down because it's enough to run the games just fine, and because of that, it does not overheat. That to me seems like the most likely reason for why this is happening, and honestly, good job Apple, because I expected a lot more dimming and issues with gaming with this. To my surprise, you actually don't even really need this that much, but we are gonna wait until those AAA games are gonna come, and in that case, this will probably help out with those but who knows. But to sum the gaming portion up, I'm completely mind blown that you could play at 100% brightness with no issues at all. And then the third reason is that Apple actually did update the driver chip for the display, making it more efficient with the new 15 Pro Max. So maybe the display right now isn't using as much heat or not overheating as much, so it can be at max brightness with no issues with great performance. Maybe that's another one of the reasons, but honestly, I am so mind blown that you could play at max graphics for 30 minutes with not even a sliver of display dimming. So with that said, here's the conclusion for this video. For part one with regular apps, it seems like Apple is fixing those issues with this brand new update and working with third parties. So those overheating issues should be going away. For the benchmarks part, that doesn't really matter because it's very extreme and I'm not sure what you could do to kind of simulate that crazy performance. And in that case, if you do, then yes, this is gonna help. By the way, I'll leave a link down below just in case you do wanna try it out because it will keep your chassis nice and cool. And then for the third part, gaming, I think it's just fine. No major overheating issues. So with that said, don't let the overheating talk and drama everywhere stop you from buying or upgrading to this phone because it turns out it's actually just fine. 
So thanks for watching this video. Click subscribe to check out more of these. Definitely check out one of those two videos over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.